Uh, Marcus, <laughs> not sure I do know where to start actually. Um, <laughs> how about the the, ca the catch, non-catch at the end? That was uh, all quite chaotic at the end. How was your view of it? Um, I first thought it was it looked good. Um, you know, I think you see it from a distance, but uh, obviously then the ball obviously slides along the ground. But at the time, I, I don't think we really understand the rules. I don't think I know the rules properly to really to say, tell you whether it's right or wrong. But um, from my understanding, what's been said by umpires and stuff, you've got to have control of the ball and your body until the, the motion is finished. And obviously, that would be the, the challenging part to that to the catch. So. And uh, I just wonder, with your long experience of cricket, it's obviously it's a, it's a big old chase lying ahead of you. You lost early wickets, but sometimes an unusual event can can change things and it can be the, the sort of the sliding doors moment of course that's where we're going to be sitting at the moment is that thinking right there's an opportunity still to win the game and um, we've seen many games over the years that have uh, drawn out in that, in that conclusion and, and we come out on top so um, all I, what I do know is that you know we've got some key players still to bat and obviously a couple of key men still in the crease uh, and the team is a positive team who sees the opportunities to you know to do things special and do things slightly different um, so there's no doubt that they'll be coming in tomorrow, you know, trying to do their best to, to make sure that happens. And can I just ask you, we've just seen Nathan Lyon come in, can barely walk, could barely walk when he came out to bat. First, your, just your, your opinion as a, as a bloke, really, about coming out to do that for his team, but also whether sending him out suggested that Australia were slightly concerned about the sort of the chasing power that his team's got. Um, I don't know about that. I think you know, they're just trying to utilise as much as they can. They've got 11 guys who can come out to bat, so why not you know, use... You know, every one of them. You've got a guy in Mitchell Stark at the other end who can hit the ball really well, and he, he did get a couple away. Um, it did take a little bit of time out of the game when potentially you could sort of move it forward, and I, th I don't know whether we would have done that as a team. I think our ethos probably would have been looking at it and thinking, right, there's an opportunity now. Use the time um, to bowl them a little bit more. But uh, credit to Nath, you know, to, to walk out like he did and you know stand on one leg basically and. Um, you know, smashed a couple, played quite nicely for a period of time, um, and it wouldn't have been easy, no doubt about it, because obviously it looks a nasty injury. So fair play. Marcus, the way the guys approached the short deliveries, batting-wise, on Thursday night and Friday has been heavily criticised. Have you had a conversation? Uh, have you discussed how, we, how you play in the short ball, and has it maybe just maybe left a little bit of? uncertainty in terms of this ultra attacking approach well, look, I think it's really important that we don't react too much to things that have happened I think you, you've got to be learning all the time you've got to be thinking on the job you've got to be making the most of any situation and then you try and make those judgments when you're out there and, and we trust those guys to make that call um, we are a positive team we, we like to be you know on the front foot and trying to be aggressive and get the balance right at the same time um, so it's not, not a case that you're going to have conversations and change the way you're going to be planning. As long as they're prepared and they, they've done the thinking about what sort of plan they want to take out into the middle and the way they want to play, that, that's good enough for me. And I think that's the way that the team operates. You know, we will continue to be that team that wants to be positive, but we'll try and read the situation um, and pick and choose our moments when we can do that. And I think you could probably see in the course of this, the innings today, that that's you know, when we've really got a good balance on what we tried to do, we have to absorb it straight away. The new ball was tough today. Um, but then we could try and attack when we needed to attack a little bit later in the day. Did they get that balance right in the first innings, though? And is, or is it, this is a learning process? Uh, it's always a learning process. Well, of course there is. But I think you're always trying to get the, the feel of what's going on. We, we lost wickets to, to the short ball. Of course we did. But I think over the course of today, let's, let's put that in context when... Australia were batting, they didn't take on the short ball as much, um, but yet they still lost wickets and they didn't score as many runs. So we've got to, it's, you've just got to try and work it out, adapt to the situation, um, but trust in the process of what we're trying to do. Well, Stefan, I'm just, just wondering on the short ball, but just more generally, I think we saw 50 overs where they said 98% deliveries were, were short. Your thoughts on having so much 
short pitched bowling when do you think it's entertaining do you think it's it's good cricket is it just something that's part of the conditions or what do you think about we as coaches were sat on the balcony watching it and you know thinking how it's going to change the game and adapt the game because i think you can clearly see and and maybe on a pitch like it is at the moment when it's it's a little bit too paced and sometimes the ball comes off at different um, bounces here i think we saw one the two from joe root one bounced at a certain height and then another one got out tonight um it, it might change the way that the game is played when the ball gets old and the pitches are flat. You might see a lot more of it in, in the future time to come. Um, and how that will adapt test cricket, I have no idea at this point. Um, but it, it was very, very different, isn't it? It's com- in comparison to what we see, um, we could be seeing something that might need to be understood or adapted uh, in the future to come because it was different. Um, and not test cricket as we generally know it. Was it good? I don't know. I don't know the answer to that because it's just so different at the moment. I think until we've seen it probably a little bit more in the course of this series, definitely a bit more tomorrow, and then maybe in other, other test series around the world, you, 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 I think more and more people will pick it up and go, right, we're going to adapt this and use it into the game. You know, we were talking about body line theories and all these different things going back years in history, but different, very different. Marcus, if you were in the Australian dressing room, how wary would you be of Ben Stokes, given what he's achieved in the past? Well, we know the history, don't we? we you know, we've talked about it many times, about Headingley and, and other occasions where he's been um, the store of, uh, of the innings and sort of holding it together. So, of course, I think while Ben is there, Ben Stokes is there, um, us in the England change room along with the rest of the guys with Johnny and, and um, Ben Duckett and, and the tail enders we, we're still pretty hopeful you know we still while that's uh, while those guys are still out in the middle we're still a good chance what's going on um, but we know ch- cricket's a funny old game uh, Mark just going back to the, the disputed catch I'm just is this an area of the game that's becoming sort of less clear cut with technology becoming better there seems to be one of these every test match where this sort of higher definition vision that shows a ball grazing the grass or something it seems to be becoming more contentious than than less as the technology gets better yeah maybe and i think it's probably the same sort of situation with var in football isn't it which we all know is a uh, a difficult one um yeah like it's understanding the rules and seeing the different parts of it i think at the time when you 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 see the clean catch and it looks okay and it's like there's no issue, but then you put the technology on and you see the, you know, the ball slide along the floor, that's when you start to question it. Um, if I really understood, understood the rules, I could probably give a, a better judgment on, on what was happening. Um, but it, that is part of the game. We know technology is there. TV cameras are all over the place at every game, every test match or one day international you play. So you're going to see different angles. You're going to get difference of opinion. Um, it's just trying to understand it. And look, there's trust in the process. The umpires make the decision. You know, they sit back and trust in what they call. George, I'm with you. Uh, just wanted to ask about those uh, wickets at the start of England's second innings. Uh, as a batting coach, what, what do you say? Do you just sometimes have to accept that the bowling's too good? Uh, no, I said well bowled. You know, there were some real good deliveries bowled there. Um, and I think you, you look at them and go, on many occasions, they might not get you out all the time, but they're always going to challenge you, your defence and your technique. You know, bowling those type of deliveries, and that's that's what you expect when you're facing the new ball against world-class bowlers. You're going to get those deliveries. Um, they they manage to get two or three together and and really sort of knock the back out of uh, our top order. So does does that mean you tell the batters to almost forget about it and just um, you know get on with things next time? About I mean, look at the Harry Brook one. I'm not sure what he could have done really. Well, I think they make their own assessments on that. I think. You know, many a time that um, they get good balls, it's easy to see. You can see it on TV. They watch the replays. They understand the process. So. Yes, yeah, pretty much the same. If you'd faced that, if you if you'd been bowled by those balls, um, would you have just taken your hat off and said, "Fair enough, fair deal." Yeah, nine times out of ten. Yeah, I think as a batsman, you always try and find a reason or a way that you could have done better. Um, so you're always hypercritical, but. I think once you sit down and motion sort of calms down a little bit, you can actually accept that's just good bowling. Um, Marcus, could I just ask about Ben Stokes this week? He obviously batted really in a very disciplined fashion on the second evening. He's kind of done the same tonight. He's bowled a 
12 overs fell today when we didn't maybe expect him to be in the physical condition to do that? Has he kind of really had the bit between his teeth, ashes on the line mood in him this week? And I, I think you see that from Ben often, don't you? You, you know, he, he is the master of bowling those big long spells and um, really grabbing the game and really showing to oppositions, to himself, to his teammates uh, and the public that, you know, this is what he's all about and that's what he expects from the other members of his team around him. So you, you're not going to get anything different. You know, whenever he's ready to go and he's up for, up for a fight, then he's, he's in the contest. And, you know, it's great to have someone like that in your team. You know, it's just um, everybody around the world is, is wary of him when he's in that frame of mind. So a good challenge for us. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks a lot.